everybody, how's it going? Today, I'm gonna to be assembling some Bilstein 5100 shocks for my 2019 GMC Canyon. I was able to source a set of OEM struts separately that are already removed from a vehicle as opposed to doing all this work while the vehicle is taken apart. Just so you know, you can do all of this with the shocks that you have on your truck, but you just have to pull them off, do this process, and then reinstall them. I just opted to find a set that was already removed. That's the exact same set that's on my truck. And I'm gonna do the pre-assembly of the Bilstein on the workbench here. And then when I'm ready to install them on the truck, I simply have to swap in the fully assembled Bilstein right into the truck. A Little less downtime when I'm installing on the vehicle. So I've had these for a while. I've just never gotten around to installing them on my Canyon. This is the Bilstein 5100. So these struts are adjustable using this locking ring right here. And this can be removed and placed in any one of these spaces. The lowest setting on these is stock vehicle height. So if you wanna just install bill steins with the same vehicle height, that's what this one's for. The next groove up is 0.7 inches of front lift. The next one up is 1.3 inches of front lift. The next is 1.9 inches of front. And then the very top is 2.6 inches of front lift. Now I'm gonna be going with this fourth position that's 1.9 inches of front lift because I don't want the front to be any higher than the rear. And I don't plan on installing a block in the rear to raise the rear of the truck. I just wanna raise the front. So the way you adjust this, you simply move this snap ring from one slot to the next. Then when you go to assemble your strut, it comes with this piece here that slides over the top and it sits on top of that snap ring so that when you install the rest of the assembly that you're going to transfer some stuff over from your factory units, it will sit at whatever height. So it'll sit here, 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 etc, etc, wherever you set it at. So the kit also comes with a new top locking nut, a zip tie, a shock boot. The rest of the stuff you will transfer over from your factory struts. So don't throw anything away from your factory struts. We're gonna reuse a lot of stuff from here, except for the strut itself on the factory vehicle. So you will need to use a McPherson strut spring compressor tool to disassemble the factory struts. And I just rented this from my local auto parts store and it's free tool rental. So just save your receipt. You use the tool and then when you're done, you take it back and they refund you. I've always done this for spring compressor tools. Um, I've never owned one myself. These have always worked out just fine for me. A lot of people are a little sketched out by these, but I've never had an issue using them and I've never felt unsafe using them. Just make sure you take the proper precautions and read the directions on how to use this tool and you'll be fine. So before you start disassembling your factory strut, you need to take some orientation of where things are currently because you wanna swap the orientation of this coil spring over to your new Bilstein. And what I mean by orientation is you want everything to line up exactly the way it was on the truck so that when you bolt it in down there at the bottom on the lower control arm, it all lines back up the same way. Otherwise, you may run into some issues. So on these struts, on the top of the strut hat, there's a hole right here. That is facing the outside of the vehicle. So this strut is for the driver's side, meaning when I have this bolted in, this strut tower is gonna to be facing out towards the outside of the vehicle. That's what that circle means. So that means I want all of this strut tower and the coil spring and everything, including the pieces down here that we're gonna swap over to be in line on the new strut. So take some orientation and make some marks with a marker or something, and make sure you record those over so that you can make sure you line them up on the Bilstein strut. If you have a good eye, you'll notice that this strut is actually missing a part. The upper strut hat retainer washer is a cup shaped washer that goes in between the strut hat and the top bolt. I didn't notice that the part was missing until I got it all disassembled. Luckily, I had one laying around and it was able to reassemble the new Bilstein strut correctly. But just in case your truck has a similar issue, make sure your original strut that you're disassembling is correctly put together before you disassemble it. Otherwise, you may have trouble putting the Bilstein together. I suspect Expect that the truck where these struts came from, there was a TSB that addressed uneven ride height from the driver's side to passenger side for these trucks, and the TSB repair procedure was done by a dealership, and that was to install a spacer on the driver's side OEM strut. I found the spacer when I got everything pulled apart, and I suspect that the dealership tech that performed the TSB missed reinstalling the upper strut hat retaining washer. Just another advocation for doing your own work on your vehicles because you never know if it's going to be done right or not unless you do it yourself. After you've taken orientation of everything on the factory strut, you can install the spring compressor tool onto the coil spring. And the way this thing works is there's two grooves, one on the top and one on the bottom, and then there's these locking brackets that close shut when you have them installed so that it doesn't slip off of the 
coil spring. So you're going to take one and you're going to install it into a place on the coil spring like that and then tighten up the bolt on the coil springs compressor all the way as much as you can by hand because then we're going to use a tool to tighten it up. And I'm actually going to flip this around so that the hex head is on the bottom. It'll be a little easier. So I've got that one installed on that side. Then I'm going to take this other one that I have and install it opposite of the one I just installed so that when we compress the spring, we can do both sides evenly. So something like that. And then make sure you close the locking tabs on all four spots. You may need to use a little force because it's not quite going over the lip of the coil spring, but get them all locked in. Next I'm going to use a three quarter inch socket on the end of my impact and start tightening these up a little bit at a time evenly so that it compresses the spring evenly. Now at this point the spring is compressed enough inside of the tower here that I can loosen this 15 millimeter bolt on the top of the strut hat and then this whole thing will come apart. And something that might happen eventually while you're loosening this, the shaft on the factory strut may start to spin with the nut. So you'll have to use a box wrench to loosen the rest of it the way and hold this with like a pair of channel locks or something. I'm just zooming in so that you can see when I spin this, that spindle inside there is spinning with it. So you need to hold the end of it with a pair of pliers while you loosen this nut. Now I'm going to disassemble this completely by pulling the strut out. I'm going to keep the coil spring compressor on this spring. I'm just going to set it aside while I assemble the Bilstein and get it ready for the coil spring. So we're going to transfer over a couple of things from our factory strut, like this lower perch. That should slide right off. If your truck has um, a little bit more rust on it, it may be a little more difficult to remove. This came off of a brand new truck that somebody had with less than 500 miles. They installed a lift kit, so this came off super easy. But if yours is a little more um, difficult, you can turn it upside down on your workbench like it was here and start tapping it with a hammer all the way around to slowly get it loosened. Also, you can spray some penetrating oil down in here so that it goes down in between and you can keep just lightly hammering it down and eventually it'll make its way free and we're going to reuse this piece. This plastic thing came off of the strut. I'm not going to reuse it so I'm just going to put it back into place. And that's all we're going to use from the factory strut. You can throw these away or try to sell them or whatever you want. Um, just you're not going to reuse this at all. The first thing I'm going to do on my Bill Stein strut is adjust this snap ring to the fourth position. Like I mentioned earlier, these are the different spots you can put this snap ring to get the different heights that you want. I'm going to be using that fourth which is 1.9 inches of lift. And you can just gently take a pair of pliers and move it up one ring at a time. Move each side gently and then double check it's sitting in that ring all the way around and it's seated nicely there. I just felt its seat after I spun it a little bit so now I know that thing is seated all the way. Then you're going to take this included piece that comes with the Bilstein kit. It's going to slide over the top of the Bilstein strut and then it's gonna come all the way down and it's just gonna sit on top of that uh, retaining ring. And this is just gonna sit loosely on here for now, but once it's all fully assembled, this won't move around and it won't be loose. Next, I'm gonna take this factory lower coil spring mount and install it into the Bilstein strut, just like that. And it simply comes into place and it sits over the top of the retaining part that we just installed. And it's gonna be loose, like I said, for a minute until we get everything assembled. So the shock boot that comes with the kit just slides over the top like everything else just like that and you can bring it down as far as it can go and it's going to look something like that. They also give you a zip tie that you can put around the bottom of the shock boot here so that it stays in place. So I'm going to take the included zip tie that they give you and install it right here on the bottom of the shock boot. Okay. 
So another thing I'd like to note about the shock boot is in the directions, they say to have the bottom of the shock boot here 13 and a half inches from the bottom of the strut down here. So just take your tape measure and measure from the bottom of the shock boot to the bottom of the strut itself, 13 and a half inches. And it doesn't have to be exact, but get it close. Next, you need to take uh, the factory shock boot and remove the washer that is inside of it, just like that. You can get rid of the plastic rubber shock boot, but we're gonna reuse this washer. And this washer needs to be facing down, like so, and it goes over the top of the strut and onto the new rubber boot. At this point, we're ready to assemble the coil spring into this shock so that we can put on the strut hat, the other washer that's on top of the strut hat, and then our new bolt on top of the strut hat. So that's how that's gonna be assembled. Make sure you get these assembled correctly. You need this washer on top of here, and then the nut on top of the washer, and bolt it all together with the coil spring in between. So now I'm gonna put the coil spring back in here, compressed, and assemble this, get it tightened up as much as I can, and then you release the tension on the coil spring. All right, to make this next process go a little easier, I've got my shock mounted in a vise, so it's just not moving all around. I've got the lower perch in the correct spot. This is the outside of the truck, if you can imagine that. So this is lined up in the right spot. It's sitting on top of the snap ring underneath here, and I've got my shock boot up here. And that washer that I just showed you, I took off because it gets in the way of the spring when you're installing it, but I'm gonna put this on after I put the spring on. It'll go right there, and the rest will get assembled. So now I've got my spring, it's compressed. I'm gonna bring it over the top of the strut and lower it down onto the strut. You should have made some marks on your spring to align it correctly, but it should line up into the back of the perch. There's a little bit of a seat here for it to sit. You can see there, the spring is sitting in this perch with this little seat right here. That's how you want that to be oriented. And now we'll move up to the top of the strut where we're gonna put on the strut hat. So we've got the bigger washer that goes face down that goes over the top of the shock boot like that. Then we've got our strut hat with the hole that's gonna be facing towards the outside of the vehicle. In this case, it's to the left here. And that just goes up over the top of the strut and bring it down and line up your marks with your coil spring so that everything is in the correct orientation, how it was on the factory strut. Then you can take the other washer and that one needs to go face up. So the opposite of the other one that we put in here. The other one was in there on top of the strut like this. This one right here needs to be facing up. But anyways, you put that on top. And then next we've got a retaining nut that's gonna go and hold this all together and you can thread that into place on the top. Now we can start tightening up this nut and you wanna be careful if this spindle part of the strut starts to spin, then you need to use something to hold it so that you can tighten the nut with a box wrench or something like that. This needs to be the 19 foot pounds. I don't know how to tighten this to the torque spec because if you use a torque wrench, it's gonna go over the top of this. And if you keep twisting and twisting, you may be twisting this strut inside of there, which you don't wanna do. So you can see I'm starting to spin. So I'm gonna get my channel locks again and hold that and then keep tightening this up a little bit more. You can also use a crescent wrench, adjustable crescent wrench to hold that flat part of the top of the spindle like so and using your open-ended box wrench to keep tightening this. So I tightened this nut down a little bit more till I had more threads showing and I did find the bottom. So this is tightened all the way now. You gotta hold this piece with your flat wrench or your channel locks and keep tightening this until you hit the bottom and then it's 19 foot pounds is the torque. So it's not a lot, really. There's about one, two, three, four, five. There's about six threads here, give or take, maybe five and a half six threads that are showing here for reference. Now that I have this all assembled, I'm gonna loosen the tension on the spring compressors a little bit at a time on each end, and then this strut is fully assembled. Once you remove the spring compressor, this is a fully assembled strut that can be installed in your vehicle. I'm gonna save that for another video, so that's it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. We'll see you next time, later.